It is the 30th of September 2023 and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. I'm I don't know what to do. I have I've forgotten everything. <laughs> I'm totally out of the out of the groove of recording this show. Well, well first of all, welcome back. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to be here. Thank you, uh, Adrian, and uh, thank you to Jeremiah, who's not here today, um, for holding up the fort. You guys did awesome. So, well, thank you very much. We we enjoyed ourselves. I mean, clearly, it's not the same without all three of us being together. But yeah, we we had a few indulgent conversations while you were away. Hopefully, hopefully, other people enjoyed listening to them as well as as much as we had. I, I I did a few spot checks here and there, but I was busy, so I couldn't listen to all of them in, in, in their completeness. But what I heard was, yeah, brilliant. Good stuff. So cool. thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. So I'm looking forward to hearing all your travel stories, the good ones, <laughs> the bad ones, the colorful ones, the, the, the ones that probably shouldn't be broadcast on the internet. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've I've I have no filter. I have nothing to hide. Everything <laughs> is is it's gonna be spread out in front of you here. Ah, so yes, I was in Eastern Europe, Southeastern Europe, um, with two groups, five people in total, plus myself. Uh, we did 22 days together. We drove 3,000 kilometers, which comes down to something about slightly under 150 kilometers a day. So it's not like a lot of driving, but it, it, it adds up over time. Yeah. Um, we did this in an electric vehicle, which means we had about 12 fast charges while we did this. Um, we crossed borders eight times. Okay. And we've seen Berlin, Dresden, Prague, Vienna, Budapest, and parts of Transylvania. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> That, that can't possibly be it. I mean, I know things like, you know, fast charging the car can be fairly straightforward, you know, uh, and I know that crossing borders is a lot easier in the EU than it is when you live in the UK. Uh, but uh, there's got to be more to tell than that. Did you take any photos? Um, that too, yes. We, <laughs> yeah, okay, we, good, right, we, right. It was a photo tour after all. So um, the way this was set up is that we drove in a Tesla Model 3, um, which is very good for road trips for longer stretches because it it it, char it charges fast. So we had the longest charging stop was like forty minutes, but usually it was like twenty minutes or something around that. So that easy we, then, really. We used the charging stops more like uh, it, they were welcome because you could um, have a quick bio break get some coffee and stretch your legs. So uh, that worked out really well. Photography, um, the way this was set up is that we uh, drove during the midday usually, so the, which is typically the time of day where the light is a bit harsher, where, um, where photo which is not that ideal for photography, at least not for the photography that we wanted to do. And then we arrived in the early afternoon at the next place, we um, checked into the hotel and then we went to like an evening shoot, grabbing some lunch and maybe do a little night shoot. So okay. we um, used, the, let's say, the, 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 the nice light of the day um, in the evenings and then next morning we did some photography and then we drove on to the next spot. And we usually spend one night, but uh, in Vienna we spent two nights and in... In Romania, in Transylvania, um, I think it was even three nights. Okay, so there were there were some some, um, and there was one spot in between where we didn't do any photography, which was just a stopover, and that was between Romania and Budapest because the drive would have been too long. So uh, we added a little, a little stop at uh, the edge of the Hortobaj National Park, which is a plane full of water with lots of birds and things oh nice and uh we're in a little in the bibik nature lodge lodge there <clears throat> which is uh just a very nice beautiful place where we could just stop over for a day eat something get some bird photography stories from 
uh, from the guy who runs the lodge. And uh, it's not the ideal time for that, but there were some birds, there was some water. So you got to sleep with the occasional meh, meh, meh from the outside. <laughs> and <clears throat> so, but it was, it was mostly city focused um, on the more Western part. And then in Romania, we had our focus on, well, Transylvania on landscapes, on fortified churches, which there are a lot of those, lots of UNESCO World Heritage sites there that um, you can visit. And we picked three of the most important ones there, Birtan, Viskri, and Segishwara, which are, um, yeah, old. And a fortified church is a, is a church that is also a fort because the, uh, the Ottomans, the Turks, tended to... Um, to raid the area and people needed some protection so they built these fortifications which ends up making churches that have uh, a watchtower instead of a normal steeple like mm, you can climb up there look down they they have um they have uh, like circular walls like multiple concentric walls around them so like uh, Viskri, for example or i think birtan has three concentric walls around it so if you are an intruder you need to have some decent climbing skills while arrows are being fired in your direction mm. so sounds like it sounds like it used to be a dangerous part of the world <laughs> then yeah it, yes. yeah so so that's interesting. So I like it's uh, so city hopping. That sounds great because that's that's a great list of cities you've got there, right? That's um, it was yeah. it, it was a bit a bit like a cruise um, <laughs> where where you got to see parts of the city, and I made sure there was like a, of course some of the important things that you will find in your travel guides, but also some places where where you don't typically get to. So. Nice. mix of mix of touristy not not so touristy nice so so i don't know there's lots of questions going through in my head i mean i i don't think i've ever had in fact i'm sure i've never had the luxury of uh of going on a photo tour that's all in a car and therefore you don't have to worry about packing all your stuff into something that will fit under the seat in front of you on the plane and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I imagine there's, uh, yeah, you, you have to put, fit it into a car though, which, um, yeah, true. Yeah. True. Which you, you, you're familiar with, uh, with a model three, which I does have indeed, more yes. space than you would expect because it has like uh, two additional trunk areas. Um, that yes, that's true. Things. Yes. So it worked out well. Packing wise, it worked out quite well. Um, first tour, we were uh, just three, and the second tour, we were four people in the car. Ah, okay, so, okay. So you had a full car on a second tour, then. So, so, mm -hmm. so, does it, is that uh, everybody brings a, a bag with all their clothes in, then, and then, and a camera bag as well, so that they can? Uh, get that was the normal setup: one duffel yeah. bag, preferably squeezable, so it yes. <laughs> can fit in better. <laughs> Um, so yeah, a large duffel bag and a camera bag. That was the oh. setup. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So I, I like, I'm liking this, you know, is that there's, there's lots of good things in this for me as, as the future of photography tours, right? One is that, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more economically, uh, sorry, environmentally sustainable because you, you did this in an EV, right? So that was the idea, you know, yeah. um, compared to, you know, hopping on a plane and then traveling around in a bus for, for two weeks, um, you know, a lot less, uh, a lot less carbon footprint, uh, than, than, than that. Well, so that, I, I couldn't, I couldn't prevent people from flying there. Um, ah, which, point, yeah, yeah, okay. which, yeah, but um, at least the tour itself uh, didn't produce too much carbon, and I didn't. So, um, yeah, so you didn't have. I mean, that, yeah. that's 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 a couple of flights saved. The fact that you could, you, you oh, were sure. able to need to do that. So, yeah, okay. So that that's so, and yeah, like I say, you know, the 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 idea of you can have a slightly bigger camera bag or something like that, you know, because there's always that trade off when you pick, yeah, you, know, you pack for a, a trip, isn't there? It? It's yeah. like, well, I'd love to take this lens and this lens and this lens and a, and a third camera body and and uh, I could take some lights as well and yeah, and a try uh -huh. and uh, yeah, but uh, but I guess uh, yeah, the, most of the time you get don't get to do that so and and uh yeah how so so 
there's also though i could I, I perceive for me personally there there it could be quite challenging so sometimes when you're on a on a bus or, or you're on a plane you can have some time to yourself and peace and quiet i i love being with people but i also to make that possible i personally need a little bit of downtime on my own so uh yeah where is it is it fun being in a car with strangers for a, lo- a long period of time is that a Be- good thing before i go there let me let me start a little slideshow here just oh on, yes just right, on yes, the side the just on the side so the um i'll just have some f- photos running so if anyone wants to see some of my photos then um they're on the in the video right now um so nice so um that was one of my worries to be honest um just being on all the time and <clears throat> it it worked out much better than I expected in that respect because I well it it wasn't permanently on you know if you do a photo a photo tour or a photo workshop um, for that matter there will always be times when the group is just roaming doing something finding stuff um, it's it's not like I'm hand holding everyone all the time. Um, the driving times were nice to, you know, the car isn't very loud inside, so the driving time was quite good to just talk and uh, and throw some questions back and forth. Um, but then there were also places where we just said, okay, let's split for half an hour and and find things that interest us and come back here and uh, and then find the next spot. So, um, and then of course. In the evenings, there's <laughs> the day's over at one point, so you split as a group and uh, you come back in the morning. So it's a it ends up being a fairly like well um, easy to follow um, grid of activities or schedule, um, which um, which tended to work out really well. And then in the middle, there was a break for me, um, which. <laughs> Which was also a bit of a forced break. <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, you 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 will have noticed that my voice is a bit um, a bit shot. Yeah, I and... thought that was just lots of lo- lots of interesting food <clears throat> and too much to drink, but maybe not. <laughs> no, it's not um, because I caught COVID in the middle of the tour. Oh no! Which, which was which was a really interesting experience and a very uh, scary one for for a short while because. The first group was just left when I tested positive, and the second group was um, about to arrive. So, how do you manage that? And um, I, I did have a plan B uh, in my back pocket in the hope to not have to use it. Oh, but uh, of course, um, I then had to use it, and it worked out okay in terms of the timing and in terms of um, getting everything sorted uh, because. I had uh, in total seven days in Romania and the second group started off on their own. I I rented a rental car for them and had the group start the tour on their own with m- me remote managing it. Right, okay. So we pretty much used used what the internet gives us right there's there was a facetime there was uh, uh notes apple notes that we um use here for the show as well so i could <clears throat> put notes together and have a little schedule for the day and some gps locations that the group could drive to so um we had a, a video conference here and there and then in between in the car so um that worked out really well. So, uh, of course, it would have been more ideal if I was the driver all the time for that mm-hmm. first part of the second tour. But um, they were game. They were fine. They were like, okay, sure, let's let's do this. I mean, we we, we want to do this tour. So um, that worked out well. And the other thing I had was FFP3 masks. You are familiar with FFP2, which is a a European standard. Um, It's like FFP2 is like an N95 mask. So that filters like 95% of the virus. FFP3 masks filter over 99%. Oh, okay. I had had an entire stack of like 20 of them with me. Um, Again, just in case. And that was the case. So... Um, these masks are are very a very good fit. They have like foam around the nose, so you, nothing comes out there. And uh, they are okay. they yeah, are yeah. like made of three layers and things. And they have 
uh, rubber bands behind your head, not behind your ears, so you can wear them for hours without any issues. And uh, we decided as a group that, yes, we will continue after those seven days and uh, drive together. So I was doing the driving and we all wore masks for, well, until I tested negative. So okay. had the window open, uh, uh, cracked open a bit. Um, I was lucky in that my vaccination status is probably among the best. So I have like the full, the, anything that goes, I have in me. <laughs> and um, so the, the symptoms were relatively minor. Um, got a cough, bit of a throat ache, but nothing other than that. So okay, so, uh, no wow. headaches, no brain fog, no nothing. So <clears throat> that allowed me to continue that. Had that not worked, I would have um, pretty much had the group uh, in like a remote situation with them driving and me me doing a remote guidance of sorts. Yeah. N not ideal, yeah. but it, the group was game and uh, it worked really well. We continued the tour. No one got sick. Um, the masks are that good. Um, I kept doing my daily tests until I wasn't seeing the, the second red line anymore. Mm -hmm. And of course, I kept like, I didn't eat with the group, at least not inside. So we had a, like, I got my breakfast in the room. Um, for dinners, we, we, we resorted to, to eating outside and me sitting a bit to the side. A bit so, of it, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, <laughs> that was kind of the worst case, but we made the best out of it and it worked out. It worked out really well. Oh, well, well done for having all the contingency plans and being able to take care of everybody. That's, um, yeah. that's clear, clearly well thought through there. Um, and good that it didn't, you know, didn't, uh, you know, spoil completely, uh, the, the second tour group for you or for, uh, for yes. them, I guess, more <laughs> as well. So, and, and I'm looking at the slideshow here, right? Back to the photos. Right? I'm looking at the slideshow. Um, you've been having some fun, haven't you? Because, yeah, you know, some of these these photos here, uh, I, I'm going to guess, e e I, I, I don't think you've been playing with these in post. I think you've been having some creative fun with the, your choice of lens as you've been going around <laughs> Europe, haven't you? And. Um, I could I could take a punt, uh, but but tell tell me, you know, because there's some there's an there's an interesting uh, aesthetic to a lot of these photos. <laughs> that seeing. Yeah. not all of them, but quite quite a few of them. Um, so tell me, I had the luxury of doing that same tour twice in two different directions. By mm -hmm. the way, which also changes the dynamics quite a bit of the entire tour, like the 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 over art the the, the arch. Over it is different um, yeah. from a, from a um, from an energy point of view, but that was that worked out good in both directions because they were two very different tours. Um, but we visited very similar places, and so I had the on the way down, I had the uh, like normalish lenses on, as in my uh, my twenty four millimeter. Well, it's not quite normalish; it's my tilt shift, but it's one of my go to lenses. Um, or a simple 50 millimeter uh, lens on the camera. Um, and I'm the, at this point, I'm the type that I, I go out and I bring one camera, one lens. I don't carry around a big backpack and three cameras and 12 lenses. So I, I want to be flexible and flexibility means not carrying a lot. But then mm -hmm. I also have to make do with what I have, which helps the creativity, I think. So... Um, that's what I did on the way east. And then on the way back, I somewhere about a third in, maybe half in, I thought, well, let's mix this up. And I put the Lens Baby on, which is the um, uh -huh. just the Lens Baby Spark, which is mm -hmm. this squeezy lens kind of thing. Um, and that is, it has some unpredict unpredictability in it. It's... <laughs> It's fun because you get to show things in a different way. You have this, a lot of out of focus area. You can, it's like, I call it the poor man's tilt shift because you get to tilt mm -hmm. that thing and shift it around a bit and it ends up with like a, 
this hot spot on the picture that you can choose to like that you can use to bring out your subject or, or direct attention towards your subject and then um, I like I really like the results of that because these photos have a very specific aesthetic so. yeah they do it's great yeah so um, you know it's uh, it's it's very um, it, it's, a, it's a great look um, and uh, it, it's something that gives you it helps you when you're playing with a lens like that it helps you see things in a different way as well doesn't it so you end up looking for different things and stuff. And, and so again, I, I was, stuff. I had a huge luxury of going to that same place as twice. So yes. I, 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 I already had my in quotes, sharp shots and good shots from the first round. And, um, and that also informed my, like how I looked at things. because I've already seen these things and I've already been there and, uh, and, and I knew what to expect, um, which, I know these places anyway, so. Uh, but just coming back and, and not having that pressure on me to deliver in quotes good photos mm -hmm. um, made it so much easier to just let go and say, "Yeah, why not just use the lens, baby?" So that, it was that, it was yeah. a blast. It was a blast. So that, that yeah, I mean, because you you wouldn't normally get to do things like that unless you did the same trip twice would you so let, let's say you know in in the the i say the traditional photo tour but let, you know um a, a pre-pandemic photo tour where you go to a, an exotic place somewhere in yeah somewhere in the globe and you and you have maybe that's the one time you'll ever get to go there and so you know it, it's easy to feel some pressure you know to to get the the right photos um I guess and, that it must be quite freeing to be, as you say, to to just be able to play. And I remember from other photo tours where where I did bring my backpack on like every day, and I had three lenses in there, and I swapped them back and forth just out of out of the the sheer like panic of not getting the shot, and um, that ended up being more of a hindrance than anything. Because, of course, I spent so much more time playing with the tech and trying to figure out the tech uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and not look at things in a, with a creative eye. So, yeah, that was, that was very freeing. I enjoyed this a lot. Cool. So that's, that's, so that's another, you know, that's a, an, another tick in the positive box of doing a, a, a two-way trip or a road trip where you've got, you got to come back, you go all that way, and then you've got to come <laughs> back again, haven't you? So, you know, there's a... Yeah, so so you get to, yeah, that's that's brilliant. So so how do, how does it feel to you know having done this right with all the difficulties and that sounds quite difficult. You know what's when you got back, were you like energized by it, even though you were exhausted? Were you is 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 this the future of of photography tours for you or or part of the future? Is it will you do it again or is it yeah? How how does it all feel now you've been back a little while? There's a good chance I'll do this again. So I've returned um, expecting to be more exhausted than I was. Mm -hmm. um, even with COVID, I mean, it, it is. So, so the things I, were wor I was worried about was to not be able to be on top of things all the time. You know, you, mm -hmm. you offer the tour, people pay for it, and then you have to be um, you have to be on all the time. And uh, of course, you are the one who gets asked about things. And I spend a lot of time preparing, making sure the hotels are are the right ones, are booked well. Um, we didn't, we didn't pre-book any like dinners or lunches. That was always, because we're a small group, so it was always like, go, yeah, go into like a restaurant. 15 you know? people and say, table for 15, please. And they just frown at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, I made use of all the modern amenities, including things like Yelp to find a good <laughs> restaurant or, uh, or something decent that the group likes. Um, uh, of course, I had the scouting tour from last year, so I knew some yeah. of the places. So I had some reference there. I did the first tour, which helped me make the do the second tour better we joked on the first tour um that this is the guinea pig tour because <laughs> of course it kind of was you know as oh, cool. it, yeah, yeah. I, with all the preparation once you do it you will find out new things um luckily there weren't too many um so that one gave me some positivity about the whole thing um and after the second group 
I had this whole thing pretty well down in terms of um, uh, juggling the things, the unexpected things, which, again, if you're a small group, then it's so much easier to just discuss in a group and say, hey, this is the situation. Mm -hmm. I have these three suggestions to deal with it. Um, what do you guys think? As opposed to being in a group in front of a group of 15 or 20 and um, and everyone is just expecting this. you cannot discuss in a group that big like it's or it's yeah. more difficult to have mm -hmm. a fruitful discussion and in a smaller group that is like just like a bunch of friends. So that gave me that, that gave me quite a boost and um, I might not do the exact same tour. Because <clears throat> being away from home for like an entire month is a challenge. Um, yeah. But and you've done that one twice now anyway. Well, four times if you count the scouting trip. <laughs> where, where, yes, but the scouting trip, I skipped a couple of places that I knew well already. So ah, okay. um, I, I, I shortened that for sure. But... Um, no, I'm I'm looking I'm looking at things like okay, can can I have other tours like that? I want to keep the general model of definitely because this worked well. It was fun. It was a a good intimate group experience. It was uh, like you could discuss all the photography stuff and anything else on the on the tour. Um, but doing it for an entire month, ah, it's getting a bit bit long. So. I'm I'm already looking at different areas on the maps where, where can I can I have part of that and make it a round trip so we'll I don't know we start in Frankfurt and I pick people up from the airport and then we do a round trip and come back there after 10 oh, 12 okay. days yeah, yeah. and have seen I don't know that I could think of like an entire Germany tour I mean you could start from Frankfurt and go to Hamburg to Berlin to Munich to Dresden to the uh, even the Nürburgring Nordschleife or something yeah, yeah. Um, you could um, see the Black Forest and then come back to Freiburg and do all this within under two weeks so yeah I, I mean, it's it, you're, geographically you're in a great position aren't you because you you know, you you can get to any part of Europe reasonably straightforwardly i guess can you the driving times are the challenge this this is what i found here and the reason I, I i selected this specific um set of cities or places was that none of those was more than four hours of driving between those okay yeah so yeah. we had we had mm -hmm. like berlin dresden that's maybe two hours um i tried to keep them under three hours but then there were a couple of drives that were around the four hour mark um which was just not yeah. avoidable so we did stops in between and found something interesting to do there but um that's that's the limiting factor for me i don't want to be driving for seven hours in a single day yes yeah. that really eats into the time of photography and three, three, four hours is doable because it's in the middle of the day where the sun is high and it's um, kind of the light is harsh and um, and cruising on the on a on a on a motorway with a, like an autopilot situation that's easy enough. That's not a very that's not a big load. No, no, um, no it's not too tiring, is it? Yeah, no, not at all, not at all. Um, I the, the driving part, I was completely fine with that. Um, but yeah, the, the total duration for my, for myself, um, I might do these, the tours themselves won't be shorter. It's just my part that gets shorter because I don't do this long, uh, back and forth drive. Mm. Um, and I'm looking into, yeah, different like round trip circles that I can do, but uh, the general model is totally f awesome. I'm, I'm so happy. I, I came up with this and I'm doing this. So this is for me, this is the future of photo tours for the next few years, pretty much. Yeah. I think it's great. I mean, you know, I mean, not only is it where, where you live is, is quite, yeah, from my point of view, yeah, it's very central in, is, in the yes. European landmass, right? So you can travel in any direction quite easily, but also um, it's, there's so much to see in Europe. Right. Oh, yes. I, I've, yeah, I, I've lived in Europe all my life, right? Or they, albeit on the edge of it, you know, but the, uh, the I've only, and I've traveled to, for lots of purposes, I've traveled for holidays as a kid, I've traveled for business, I've traveled, you know, uh, for, yeah, to explore as, a, as an adult. 
And I've still only seen a fraction of what Europe has to offer. So it's just such a, a, a rich heritage, lots of you know, so many different cultures, lots of stuff to see. And the the um the east is one area and i'm really happy that i that i finally got to explore the east more because i haven't really done this in the past that much um but then also towards the west france is there and i'm i'm uh, i'm reasonably familiar with france so going to paris or something might be an idea um the north up to i don't know sweden or norway um even though norway might be a bit of a long drive at least to get there but uh, still a possibility so i'm like i'm all for exploring this a bit more yes yeah yeah no i think i's definitely the way forward i've I, yeah it's um it seems to have been at least for, for people that i know it seems to have been a, a summer of some road trips um i mean i had yeah one of my own i guess as part of my trip to canada we drove through the rockies oh yeah did a lot of a driving week, which were, which was great that was about a thousand kilometers in total about mm -hmm. 600 miles uh over the course of a week so again not too bad although there was there was one day where most of the day was driving just because sometimes the gaps between towns in canada are quite large <laughs> um, but then i had friends who drove to croatia um uh, as a family oh. holiday this summer so from the uk down through many countries in in a in a motorhome in an rv um to uh as as part of their summer vacation another another friend who's just done a tour of a chunk of europe with just him and a mate in an aston martin uh <laughs> which he said was was great fun the two of them do, uh, uh, you know doing that um so yeah um i'm guessing the aston martin one wasn't particularly f f you know carbon friendly but <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun for sure yeah um but uh yeah i the, yeah it's um definitely definitely there's a lot yeah the, there's a lot of opportunity there now i'm excited i want to do one of the you've inspired me i do want to do one of these things i would i do fancy a northern europe trip i mean france is amazing i've done a road trip around france before um and uh it, it is an amazing place tons of stuff to see all over uh, you know all over the country you know and and very different from north to south yeah you know, because of uh, of the the climate change and the, you know the geology and and all of that sort of stuff so that's <laughs> that's a, I, an interesting trip i'm i i i'm really getting uh i'm really starting to think germany might actually be quite nice to explore in like uh 10 12 days um at least some some of the central locations and the bigger cities and uh yeah that'd be great yeah and may, and may and maybe maybe drive around on the on the nürburgring which you can because it's a public road pretty uh, much. i haven't been i have done that <laughs> um uh i haven't been there for many i think 2006 was the last time i was here it's a long long time ago and that was and uh, i didn't go back after that cause i i killed my car that weekend or actually my car nearly killed me it had a mechanical <laughs> failure okay um and, not an accident okay oh yeah oh yeah no no um yeah a big accident Oh, um, okay. Uh, I was okay. The car was, you know, a lot shorter and uh, than than when I got in it. Um, but the uh, yeah, it, it is a fantastic. That is a fantastic thing to do as well. It is an amazing place. There's nothing nothing like it. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, that's not a must. It's just it's just I'm I'm just tossing around ideas yeah. at the moment, and mm -hmm. that was one of them. So, um, yeah, I will I, I will I will put. Uh, new things up on that'd my, be great yeah there's loads of good loads of good ideas fantastic good stuff well well uh, yeah excellent thank you for telling the stories that's brilliant it sounds like it's been a real success and uh i guess you know um uh you know i guess all the people that participated thoroughly enjoyed themselves as well yeah that that was my impression absolutely okay <laughs> It's worth totally. checking, yeah. Right? Like, totally. Well, that's another thing with a small group. You can you can quickly correct things if something is weird yeah. or doesn't work well. Then, um, if you manage to establish a good rapport, which we did yeah, yeah. with both groups, um, then it is super easy to say, well, you know what? Can we change that? And I was like, okay, which honestly we didn't have to change anything. So, um, but it is a possibility. So, yeah, brilliant. I'm happy. I'm very happy with how this whole thing worked. So, yeah, there will be more for sure. Cool. Just just tossing around ideas. But uh, if anyone, by the way, if anyone who's listening to this has any ideas, right? 
or any wishes or any things, um, come on our Discord. Do yeah, do. do. Yeah, because otherwise slash, it would just be uh, my ideas and you'll just have to all do my ideas because I'd love to have a trip that goes, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd love to drive. Where would you through. go? Where would you go? I think I'd like to do a Northern Europe trip um and uh, uh yeah because that could take through you could quite a, a lot of countries i mean if you were to try you know i suppose you could take a ferry you know uh, you know uh, across the baltic or something like that but you know you could also you know just drive it can't you although it's you know it's a, a long way around perhaps yeah ch um, chances are it's, it's going to be very long so yeah um very long but, drives so the the yes. whole driving thing uh needs needs to be figured out but then on the mm. other hand going up to norway um i don't know take it for my, myself taking a train up to norway and renting a tesla there i mean they are pretty much 80 yes. percent electric now so that's a good um, point you could that do that could be you? very yeah. simple that should be yeah, fairly could. simple so I th yeah, definitely um, somewhere, and especially for for you know people traveling in, if you could if you could start off your your idea of a circular trip, if you could start that off at a place that was really accessible by train, right? And you mentioned Frankfurt, which of course is is a has a good air hub, but if the, if there's a, a a train hub that would be a good place to meet up and then go mm -hmm. from, that would that would help, wouldn't it? But no, I think France. I would yeah, I think France a photography trip. Possibly because it's a country I have seen more of than other countries, but never really had the chance to do a photography trip in. So it would France, be a, that France, France would be a real indulgence for me. And every night, some really good red wine. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and good food as well. And so, good food as well. So that that would be an indulgence for me, France. But Northern Europe, I've never really been into uh, the Scandinavian countries and up to the north of Europe. So that would oh, be a I real see. treat okay. for me as well. Well, well, well. So yeah, more, 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 more to come. Where that came from. All right. Um, well, th and thanks for listening. Thanks for asking questions. So, mm -hmm. um, how about some picks of the week? You brought us. Okay, this. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm curious. You brought us this a vertical a really, battery grip. This is a really specific thing. So, uh, the, don't tell me you're a vertical grip person. Uh, I am now. Really? Um, so I have. No, so this is um, the, my pick of the week. Is is a vertical battery grip? Uh, yeah, this particular one is for the Fuji XT3, which is the camera mm -hmm. that I have, uh, and I bought one yes uh, yesterday. No, recently, about a week ago, um, and I'm loving it. It's given me a real new lease of life with the camera. It's a camera I've struggled with ever since I bought it, um, because it's a bit too. It's a bit too uh, computery in a, in some ways. I know everybody speaks very highly of the Fuji cameras for all good reasons, and I, I do like it, but never really emotionally connected to it. Never really was the camera I would what? pick up. I mean, I, I could understand if you said a Sony camera was a bit computery or, or, like a, simple or, a, Pentax, or a Pentax was a bit nerdy or I quite fancy but... a pentax i've never had a pentax or not the uh, no i don't think i have anyway so so and this is that and i've got it here sitting right beside me on my desk here it is mm -hmm. look this is the fuji xt3 with the battery grip that allows you to hold it vertically right so, so you made it's... a you made a very very nice almost pocketable camera into a bigger more heavy camera and Do you that know what? is better it's, it's 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 causing me to pick it up right um it partly it's just the the weight of it feels better partly it's got yeah the, the grip is obviously a lot better because the, a lot of these smaller cameras the grips are not great yeah? true um er 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 ergonomic um handling of the cameras is an important factor yeah. for sure yeah. yeah and i was finding myself looking online at second-hand cameras right and looking at things like you know um the the nikon and canon dslrs you know like the the nikon you know d3x or whatever you know from 10 years ago you know with, with big big sports camera or the canon 1d whatever's i know there's many many versions of the canon 1d and just thinking yeah i really fancy one of those it's like and then i've hit upon this idea that i could just get the battery grip for the camera i already own and because my camera is is two generations you know obsolete the the battery grip for it was peanuts right um and so and it's really i really enjoying picking this camera up now the camera feels much better and i'm i'm enjoying shooting with it more and taking it out even though it's bigger right i'm still it's 
I'm reaching for it more often. So yeah, just goes to show like smaller cameras are not always where you want to be. Um, sometimes there's just something, an emotional attachment, you know, some, something that's difficult to describe. It's cool. I mean, if, if it makes you use it more, then I'm all for it. Yeah. So, cool. yes. So I am now a vertical battery grip person. <laughs> I'm not, but, but that's, it's a fair enough. I mean, it, it makes you photograph more. A vertical battery grip would make me shoot less because the camera gets unwieldy. So maybe starting off with a small camera is, is, is that makes might a difference because <laughs> you, you have a full size DSLR, don't you? So. Yes. So if you added something big to that, you'd end up with a really big camera. So maybe all True. I've done is make my camera almost as big as your camera. <laughs> maybe maybe there is such a thing as the ideal camera size for each person, and you just found it. Maybe. 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 Now I need to buy bigger lenses to go with my bigger camera. <laughs> uh, all right. Um I brought us something which is a very different kind of thing and it is only remotely camera related, but it, this thing blew my mind. Do you, are you familiar with FPV drone racing? Uh, I am. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't say I was an expert on it, but I've watched a couple of videos on the internet. But um, Right, yeah. so they, they, have, they have like indoors in a sports facility, they set up gates and then... Um, they have to fly through these gates in a specific order as fast as possible with a small FPV drone, which means FPV first-person view. So you have uh, goggles on and uh, you see through the camera on the drone. And um, this was a an entirely human discipline um, until recently because um, there is now an AI drone that is better than humans. Wow, okay. And so this is a complex task because you are uh, acting in 3D space. So you know, you know if you if you have a, like a car that you need to drive like or want to drive with a computer then you're pretty much acting in two dimensions, right? It's it's forward sideways and yep. and that's pretty much it. And with this you have the whole aerodynamics and 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 gravity to deal with and a three-dimensional course, and <clears throat> now you would think that this little drone would have like uh, I don't know, twenty-five cameras all around the course to make sure it's always known where it is, and a huge computer sitting on the side, and uh, super fast Wi-Fi networking or whatever. No, this thing has an onboard computer that does this, and it has one camera and an. An IMU, like an in, uh, inertial measurement unit, which is an accel accelerometer, pretty much. Yeah, that's all it does. It doesn't have any like massive machinery around it. It's doing this based on what it has on board. It's uh, and the camera is the main kind of thing. It's the main it sensor. Uh, it, it, that is honestly extraordinary. Um, it's completely wild. <laughs> Uh, so the ability so i i'd love to understand a little bit more how i'm gonna have to watch this properly because i'd love to understand a little bit more about how yes. they put that much compute into that smaller package because these things are not easy to do right the you know a lot of what people see as ai today is very much you know yep. it's a call back to the cloud right um and what you've got there is what they would call edge compute right which yes. is where you you haven't got access to a huge amount of compute because you you, you know you, you don't have it available um so i i'm i'm absolutely so this thing has to be to has to be fast mm -hmm. low latency super low latency and it has to make sure that i mean these gates have like codes on them so it's yeah it's very specific to, yeah to, to, yeah. to snap on to uh but still it's it's mostly camera based and that and not just like there's no stereo camera it's one single camera that does it that, so. yeah because that's crazy because you've got no <laughs> you've got no depth of field there then um but again i mean which would be the same for the human if there's only one camera i mean you would really struggle with it you know uh i guess unless you know, i suppose people practice and get i mean get fpv is one it. camera so yeah. you, typically when you have these goggles on you see a mono yeah, uh, like a two D picture. Anyway, mm. it's this is just a little camera thing that is okay. These these things are now 
going into uh, realms that were entirely human, which they have done in other places, like Go, playing Go, for example. Is yeah, yeah. One of those yeah. areas um, where the humans cannot compete anymore. Chess was another one long, long ago, but now we are looking at actual physical features. It's not a game of, it's not a card game. It's not a board game. It's a physical space. And that yeah. changes things. Anyway, cameras. Mm, they, interesting. The, f funny little things, these cameras. Right? <laughs> they are indeed. <laughs> anyway, I think that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, yeah. I, I, I hope you can feel that I'm, I'm, I'm really like still boosted up from this tour, even though it's now been over yeah, for so, so you, almost yeah, a week. You, you started off when you and I first started talking earlier before we hit record, right? You were pretty low, you know, with the you know, coughing and spluttering and, and not feeling so good. And, and you, you, you're a lot higher in energy at the end of this podcast because you've been talking about your trip. So definitely yeah. I can tell that you're, uh, you're, you're boosted <laughs> by, energized by, I think it's great. All right, um, we will be back soon with more. Hopefully, Jeremiah will be back as well. You can find us at the usual online places. Come to our Discord. See you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. <laughs>